Cody Barton, out. Sadiq Charles, out. We know who's going to replace them. And we have Ron Rivera on the trade deadline here on your 27 October Daily Commanders Update. Let's go. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to your Daily Commanders Update for 27 October. I'm Nathan Perry here on Ref the District on the Believe Network. If you're listening to this on your favorite audio platform, make sure that you hit that auto download button and give us a rating. And if you're here on YouTube, we appreciate you hitting that like button and hit that sub button as well. Big news for the Commanders for this week's game against the Philadelphia Eagles as Cody Barton and Sadiq Charles have both been ruled out. Darian Mathis and Curtis Samuel are listed as questionable. Important note on Mathis is he's still not technically elevated to the 53. If he were to be game active, they would have to do something for him. Curtis Samuel's injury We'll see if that goes. Remember that the ratings now are pretty much out or in questionable. There's no more probably. So it'll be interesting to see what we do with Curtis Samuel. However, what happens there is one thing. Cody Barton being out is a big thing. This is the player who has been wearing the green dot. Washington's already trying to figure out who's going to wear it. Last year, we saw Cam Curl wear it. I expect that to happen again. More importantly is, who's that next man up? Well, it's quite interesting to note that actually Jabril Cox is going to be elevated from the practice squad now that Cody Barton is going to be sitting this one out with an ankle injury. Now, for those Jabril Cox lovers, let's not get too carried away here. He's probably going to see the snaps that Cleek Hudson was seeing prior to the Cody Barton injury. Cody Barton might start seeing more, but you're really going to be seeing a lot more of David Mayo. I know that doesn't excite you. It sure as heck doesn't excite me, but let's face it, that is Jack's boy. And he has even come out and said as much that he likes what David Mayo brings to this defense. For the rest of us, though, let's hope we get to see a little bit more of Hudson and Cox. Now, on the other side of the ball, it is going to be multiple weeks, according to Ben Standig and Ron Rivera, for Sadiq Charles. That strained calf could just take him out for a long time. Now, Washington is trying to figure out who they're going to replace, but he's not the only one on the offensive line that they are looking to move around. There's rumors, or we even shared yesterday, that Tyler Larson was snapping the ball to Sam Howe. Ricky Stromberg looks like he's in line to actually start maybe for that left guard spot. If it's not Stromberg, it's going to be Chris Paul in his second year playing there. So Stoner believes that Chris Paul is going to get the start, so Stromberg can fill in where needed. But my guess is we're going to see a little bit more of Stromberg because he was the one who did go in there. And for goodness sake, this is your third-round rookie this year. You would hope that he would get some playing time. It's interesting that they're going to Tyler Larson over Ricky Stromberg. You have two young pieces there, Stromberg and Sam Howell. If both of them turn out to be the guy, why not work them together? You don't draft, I think, Ricky Stromberg in the top 100 in that third round as a center to not just be. To, I get that they love position flex, but he's a center. Not, why not try him out as center instead of pushing him out to left guard? This is what the team does. I do think that Stoner might be right in that Stromberg might not see snaps. That we, We've seen this offensive line also have rotational players, much like you'd see the defensive line. We've seen that with Cosme and Lucas last year. We're seeing, you know, we might see it this year. It's going to be an interesting game, and it's going to be a tough game against that defensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's going to be a tough couple weeks in Washington as the trade deadline continues to inch closer. Ron Rivera was talking about it. It says, the biggest thing I explained to them, the team, is we have no idea what everyone else is thinking. People are reaching out, but nothing matters until it gets serious. All this is speculation. No one knows what's happening. 
Washington having several key pieces that are up on the trade block. We've heard rumors around Montez Sweat having offers. Chase Young has been a name that keeps going around. And even Jacoby Brissett going back to Cleveland is on the table. But as Ron Rivera said, nothing's there until it's there. And then all of a sudden it's going to come out and Washington will have the pieces. I do think Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat certainly sounded yesterday like he is done. He talked about how he's enjoyed working with the D line here, emphasis on that past tense, and that he was being a little coy about whether or not he's going to stay here in Washington. He understands it's a business. He is definitely one that I think might be gone before the trade deadline, especially as Washington does have its hands full with both him and Chase Young having good years. Which one are you going to keep? Can you tag one, try to sign the other? Well, I don't think. Montez Sweat's going to stick around, and you're going to want to try to build around Chase Young if he can continue building onto the good season that he has had so far. Uh, some big news up in the Washington front office for those nerdy guys like myself, as there was a new hire. Kind of got lost in the shuffle actually yesterday. Uh, when we were talking with Jason Campbell, but they hired Eugene Shin as their senior VP of football strategy, according to Seth Walder. This is somebody who has experience across the NFL working in the analytics department. He's not going to be working directly you know, with the team on some things. He's working on some computer models. He is working with inside the football operations. For one, I'm really excited about this because I do think this will bring Washington further into this new era. Maybe it will also help Eric Bieniemy. We know that he loves to pass the ball, but maybe, just maybe, run just once in a while, you know, not uh, at the 30% clip that we have been seeing. Maybe, in fact, it will win you a few more games. This is the season for Ron Rivera's resurgence by the way, and by the season, I mean mid-season, as his record here, Sam Fortier doing the work for us, has shown that he's had a losing record weeks one through seven, but weeks eight through 14, he's gone four and two, four and two, four, one and one. So this is the time. Will Washington take advantage in the this game against Philadelphia and start this trend, you know, this trend here of winning weeks eight through 14. Uh, we'll see about it, but don't get too excited because weeks one through 15, he's gone one and two, one and three, one and three. So Washington, Philadelphia, we've got your preview tomorrow with Believe in Eagles, Mike Gill. So make sure you check that one out. Is he super confident the way he was four weeks ago? Does he think that A.J. Brown's going to have a big game? Well, you'll have to tune into that tomorrow at 3 Eastern. But until next time, be a fan. Be a fan.